Hey guys, this is Damien from Edureka and I welcome you guys to today's video on the topic AWS Lambda. So if you guys are looking to learn cloud computing, you are in the right video. So in today's session, we are going to talk briefly about one of the most common compute service by AWS. So before we get started with this video, if you guys haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go down below and click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you'll never miss out on any videos or updates from Edureka. Also, if you guys are interested in our AWS online certification training, check out the description box below. So without further ado, let's move on to today's agenda to understand what all will be covered today. So the first thing we'll start off is by understanding AWS Lambda, followed by how AWS Lambda operate, then see its basic features. After you guys have understood on how AWS Lambda function, we will go ahead with a demo where I'll show you guys how simple it is to create a serverless API. And finally, once we're done with the hands-on, we shall see its use cases in the real-life application. Introducing AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is one of the services that fall under compute services provided by Amazon Web Services. Now, in the compute domain, we also have other services like Amazon EC2, Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, and Amazon LightSail. But in today's video, our main focus will be AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute services that runs your backend code in response to events such as object upload to Amazon S3, upload to Amazon DynamoDB table, data in Amazon Kinesis Stream or in-app activity. Now with AWS Lambda, all you need to do is simply write your code without worrying about provisioning and managing the infrastructure. Amazon Web Service provides a wide range of services out of which Lambda can trigger over 200 AWS services. Now, when you use AWS Lambda, you simply charge a low fee per request and the best part is they charge you only for the time your code runs. It is also measured in an increment of 100 milliseconds. Now, coming to the next topic, we will look on how AWS Lambda function. Now, to understand how AWS Lambda function, the first thing you need to do is go to AWS Management Console. There, you can create a function once a function is created, you simply choose the environment you want the code to run. It can either be Java, Node.js, C Sharp, Python, etc. Now all these environments are available with AWS Lambda with the choice you're most comfortable with. Now after you have written the code, the next thing to do is you save it, right? So you do that by simply deploying it. Now once the code has been saved, the next thing is you need to run the code. So you can do that by testing it and then the Lambda function will be executed. If there is no issue with the code, the function will be executed and perform its task, otherwise it will prompt an error code. Now, depending upon your code that you have written, the Lambda will execute that function. So this was all about AWS Lambda function. Next thing that we are going to discuss is AWS Lambda features. The first point or features that we are going to discuss is, is extend AWS services with custom logic which means that AWS Lambda allows you to add custom logic to AWS resource like Amazon S3, Amazon DynamoDB table, etc. Second part is building backend services. Now here you can use AWS Lambda to create new backend application service to trigger on-demand requests by using AWS Lambda API or application programming interface and custom endpoint. If you guys aren't clear with this point, I'll be showing you what basically that is in the upcoming slide when we do the working part of our hands-on. Now, getting back to its feature, third part is automated administration. AWS Lambda manages all the infrastructure for you, so you can simply focus on writing your code and all the backend services are handled by AWS Lambda. The fourth part is built-in tolerance. Now, this feature of AWS Lambda allow both AWS Lambda and the function that is running on the service to deliver predictable and reliable operational performance. Now, the fifth feature of AWS Lambda is its ability to connect to relational databases. Now, with this feature, you can use Amazon RDS Proxy, where it manages thousands of concurrent connections to relational databases, now making it easier to scale and secure your serverless application while interacting with the databases. Now, coming to the sixth and last point is integrated security model. Now, with AWS Lambda, we have a built-in SDK or a software development kit which integrate with Identity and Access Management or simply IAM. So it ensures that your code is secure and 
access with other services provided by AWS. Now coming to the hands-on part, first let's quickly check out its aim for building the serverless API and how the logic work. So the first thing is the user or a client send an HTTP request or a URL request to an API endpoint. Now when the API endpoint receives the request, it will interact with the backend server. Then that server will respond to the request and execute whatever function the user has requested and insert those data in a database. Now with that, I hope everyone understood the basic logic behind a demo. Now coming to the next slide, we shall see which services we will be using for our demo. The user in our demo will simply be the web application, mobile application or a postman that will make the request. Now the endpoint will be our API gateway. The backend server will be our AWS Lambda. So when the user write the code and feed it to the AWS Lambda, the code will be converted into a data of a zip file. And the database will be our AWS DynamoDB. So these are the services that we will be using in our hands-on. So let's get started with our demo. So the first thing you need to do is go to AWS Management Console, then simply click on Services and go down to DynamoDB and open that in a new tab. Once that is done, you simply click on Create Table, enter its table name. For this demo purpose, we will be naming it as Demo and its partition ID as Demo underscore ID. Leave everything as default and click on Create Table. As you can see here, a demo table has been created. So the next thing is go back to AWS Management Console, go to API Gateway and open that in a new tab. Click on Create API, go down to REST API for public and click on Build. Click REST, click New API, then give an API name. So in this case, it will be as Demo API. And description will be API for demo and simply click on create API once that is done simply click on action then we'll need to create a resource and provide a resource name so in this case it'll be demo and simply click on create resource and go back to action once again and click on create method since we have to post a data or insert a data simply click on Pause, click on the tick button. As you can see, our integration type is Lambda function and the Lambda region is AP South 1. And we have to provide a Lambda function. Now, for that, we have to go back to AWS Management Console and create a Lambda function. Click on Lambda and open that in a new tab. Simply click on Create Function, author from scratch, provide a name, we'll be naming it as Add Demo. And this is the environment that you're provided with. So in this case, I'll be using Python 3.7 and simply click on permission. If you already have an existing role for an IAM, you can simply click on use an existing role and select whichever role you have created. But in this demo purposes, we'll be creating a new role. So you simply go back here and click IAM console. Click on AWS services, click on Lambda, click on permission. So I'll be giving it as an administrator access. Click on next stack, click on review and simply provide a name. So in this case, it'll be Lambda API demo and create role. So the role has been created. Now go back to Lambda. Simply click on use an existing role, go back to this, refresh once. As you can see, it's there. And simply click on create function. So as you can see, a Lambda function has been created. So go back to API Gateway where we have to provide a Lambda function. As you remember, our function name is add demo. So what you need to do is uh, refresh the screen and go back to Lambda function, simply type Add and the name comes out and click save. So as you can see here, an API gateway has asked permission to invoke your Lambda function. So simply click on OK. And as you can see, this is the basic architecture of an API and Lambda integration. So simply click on test. Go back here and click on test. As you can see here, it's provided a status code 200 
with a body message saying hello from Lambda. So you can simply edit that part where you go back to AWS Lambda, scroll down. So if we can change this message to, all right guys, simply click on deploy to save the changes and go back to API Gateway and simply click on test. Now, as you can see here, we have edited the message that's saying, hi guys, this is Damon from Entereka. Now we go back to AWS Lambda. As you can see in this code, it's simply returning us a status code 200 and the message which is in the quotation. So here in the Lambda function, it's not interacting with DynamoDB. So what we need to do is simply write a code in the Lambda template so that Lambda and DynamoDB can interact with each other. So we're going to delete that code and create a new code. Import 3. Now Boto3 here is nothing but the name of the Python SDK for AWS. So it's a table we need to create. So DynamoDB equals to Boto3 dot resource in quotation of the Dynamo DB. Then simply click on enter. Then you have to give a table since we're creating a table. Then Dynamo DB dot table. And you have to remember a table name, right? So you can go back to DynamoDB. As you can see, the table that we created is demo. So simply go back to AWS Lambda, click on the parenthesis, text in demo. Then we'll be calling a Lambda, Lambda handler. And then even context. Now to insert a data, so table dot put item then item and even now item is equals to even then simply we'll return a message so return as status code status score code 200 and we'll return a message data have been created successfully looks good Okay, so simply click on deploy to save the changes and we'll go back to API Gateway and in the request body, you need to pass a partition key, right? So as you can see here, our partition key is nothing but demo underscore ID. So simply go back to API Gateway, provide the partition key that is demo underscore ID and then provide a context 100 and suppose we add another parameter, its name. Damon is age, country, India. So we need to provide a comma, otherwise it from an error. So simply click on test. So as you can see, there's some errors. So we go back here. Table that put. Oh, okay, sorry. It should be even. So simply click on deploy. Go back to API Gateway, click on test. As you can see now, the status code is running and data have been created successfully. So the next thing we need to do is we need to check if this data has been input in our database. So simply go to DynamoDB, click on demo and simply click on explore table items. So as you can see, I haven't tested, so it's returning an item zero. So simply click on test and you can see here, a data has been inserted that is named Damon, country India, age 24 and the demo ID. So we can go back to API Gateway and create another parameter. Say name is Sam, age 25, country India. Simply click test and you can see here it's been created. Go back to DynamoDB, click on run and as you can see a new parameter has been added. For now, we have been hitting the API using the AWS. But what if you wanted to give access to another user to deploy this API? So in order to do that, go to API Gateway, click on Action, click on Deploy API. So we will be providing a deployment stage. So new stage, stage name will say as Demo, and click on Deploy, click back Demo, Save Changes. 
So this will be the invoking URL. Copy that. Control C. And head back and go to Postman. Once you're in Postman, simply paste your URL. Click on Post since you'll be inserting data. Click on Body. Click on Raw. And in this part, click on JSON. And we have to provide a partition key once again. So as you remember, a partition key is nothing but demo underscore ID. And let me just say it's as 250. And provide a comma. Another parameter as say as name. Say Tom. After that, H as 32. Another parameter as country as India. Once that is done, simply click on send. As you can see here, data have been created successfully. Now, the next thing is go back to DynamoDB and simply click on run. And you can see here, Tom has already been created. Country India, age 32 and a demo ID 25. You can see how simple it is to create a serverless API using AWS Lambda. So this was all for today's demo. Now coming to the last topic, which is AWS Lambda use cases. The first use cases that we have is process data at scale, which simply means AWS Lambda execute code at the capacity you need and as you need it. So scaling match your data volume and enable custom event triggers. So the second use cases is run interactive web and mobile backend. So here AWS Lambda combine other AWS services to create secure, stable and scalable online experiences. Now coming to the third use cases, which is enable powerful ML insight, which is nothing but pre-processed data before feeding it to your machine learning model with Amazon Elastic File System Access. Finally, coming to the last use cases that is create event driven application. As you all know by now, AWS Lambda is a built in event driven application for easy communication between decoupled services. Now it reduces cost by running application during the time of peak demand without crashing as AWS Lambda have a built in tolerance. I hope you guys enjoyed the session and got to know all about AWS Lambda and understood the working of a hands on demo. With this, I thank you guys for checking out the video. And if you guys are interested in our online training certification, do check out the link given in the description box. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!